Today on Unboxing Old Stuff, we're going to unbox the Nintendo Entertainment System. Hello and welcome back to the Geek Cabal channel. My name is Jim and today we're gonna unbox a Nintendo Entertainment System, but not just one. Ugh. We're gonna unbox two. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, I'd probably have them in a separate thing, but um, the contents in this, this Nintendo here is kind of lackluster, so if I put it in a video, it'd be a fairly short one, so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and unbox both of these, and that way you can actually get a kind of comparison of what would have came in one set versus the other set, and maybe even a little bit of uh, why they had these two sets. Now, I would normally go and do kind of a plug here saying, you know, some facts and factoids about the Nintendo Entertainment System, but most people have a general understanding that this is what brought the, uh, the video games market back after the uh, crash, uh, the video game crash from, you know, like the Atari and stuff like that. Uh, but there are some kind of neat little things about the fact the reason why, like, say, for example, these are called a Nintendo Entertainment System versus the Nintendo Video Game Console or anything like that is because Nintendo wanted to kind of distance themselves from what happened with the Atari. So they wanted to make these more like a uh, like a VCR or something like that, like a uh, something that the whole family would be able to use. That's not a kid's toy or anything like that. So. They kind of went with the entertainment system. It's even kind of inspired why the fact that the, uh, the Nintendo looks like a VCR versus a uh, like what they had in Japan, which looked like a video game console where you plug the game into the top. So I'm going to move this one out of the way. And we'll start off with this one here. Now, this one here is actually a later release. Uh, it came out in uh, 1988, so a few years after the uh, Nintendo came to market. So... The kind of the idea with this set here is that it's a just a basic bundle. Uh, didn't come with any sort of games. Uh, any didn't come with a light gun like the other one. Um, this was just if you wanted the console and the controllers. This got you started. You still have to go and purchase games afterwards. So um, on the front, and this seems to be the theme that they have on each one of these. It looks like it's floating in space. Uh, unlike the other one, this one doesn't look like it's radioactive and glowing. Um, but like I said, this just comes with the two controllers. Uh, on the side here, uh, it's just got some uh, screenshots of some uh, video games. And these are actual screenshots, so unlike the Genesis Model 3, this actually shows you a little bit of uh, what the actual gameplay looks like, so you have an idea of what you're getting yourself into. Um, the back, I always love these, where it shows like the family playing the, the game there. Uh, and they're like two feet from the TV with the uh, the console right there and the controller right there versus, you know, obviously having the console on the floor and having the controllers so you could sit on the couch, but wouldn't fit on an image or a picture like that. So, um, and then just, you know, like the regular blurb, some of the stuff you can get, some of the controllers and stuff. Um, and then on the side here, uh, it's just got a couple of other accessories you can get. The uh, the NS Advantage, which which is like an arcade stick. Uh, if you follow us on our Facebook channel, I actually had a post of this where I found that I have three of these uh, sitting around and I actually got the box for one of them. Um, but the thing is, is that the NES only has two controller ports and this takes both controller ports. So you can only have one hooked up to a to a console at a time, which is also kind of funny because you actually had to hand them off. It, it had like a little switch on it to go from one player to two players. So a little weird. Uh, then the other one on the bottom there is just the uh, the track or uh, the power pad, which was used for like track and field games, where you had to stomp on it, and you know one of those ones where if you had it upstairs that your parents thought you were going ape shit as you're stomping on the ground because that uses your feet. So, so we're gonna go ahead and get this one unbox. Oh yeah, the other thing is before I unbox it is the uh, price uh, from Gu from Montgomery Ward was seventy nine ninety nine. So. This was definitely, uh, again, more of a budget console at that time. So, all right. Yeah, and this one here, like I said, I'm not going to get everything out of here because it's fairly basic, and we'll actually see more of it in the other one. But the Star Foam's in pretty good shape. I like this little handhold so that you can actually pull pull it out of the, the 
the box a little bit easier and put it back in. So the only documentation that came with is the uh, manual here. And I do appreciate the fact that the images are still look like they're hand drawn. So that's kind of a nice touch. Um, but not a whole lot here. Just really how to hook it up to the TV, how to put how to put games in it and stuff like that. So not very exciting. Um, you know, and I guess I need to kind of explain where I got both of these consoles because it's kind of a neat story on both of them. So uh, this set here uh, was actually, I got it from my brother. Now, I don't remember what I traded or did, gave him for this in return, um, but it was something he wasn't using. So uh, my older brother was the uh, one that uh, got me this console. Um, and one reason I don't get this one out is it's fairly yellowed. So one of my other projects I need to do is I need to build a uh, my retro writing system. So I've got a, a container to do that. And the idea is that when you retro write these, you'll actually take this yellow and you'll bleach it back to its original color. So this is one thing that I'm going to have to work on with this one here. Uh, kind of a neat thing, and I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but there's a notch right here so that when you put the console back down in here, uh, that notch fits the uh, the power and reset button in there. So just like the package showed, this uh, this comes with a power adapter, an RF uh, for the video, and uh, two controllers. And both the controllers are fairly yellowed as well. So, but yeah. So we'll look at uh, some of the accessories a little bit closer in the other one. But yeah, like I said, that one came from my brother. Now. This one even has a better story of where it came from. So, the action set here, uh, this was actually my ex-wife's uh, Nintendo that she had growing up. Now, she knows I have it. It wasn't something that, uh, you know, I like took in the divorce or anything like that. She actually knew I had it. Uh, she knew that we, you know, we, I collected the video games and, you know, she knew that our boys would be the ones that would get to... Uh, you know, get to use this and enjoy this and all that. So she was kind enough to uh, let me keep this in the part of the collection um, for that. So this is the action set. So as you see on the front, very similar to the other one, but this one shows that it actually comes with a light gun and a copy of Mario and Duck Hunt. Now, I don't have the copy of Mario and Duck Hunt in here because it's with the rest of the games in my collection. Though... When I had this one, I wasn't actually for sure where it goes into the packaging. Um, uh, as I was looking at this and, you know, making sure I had all this, you know, that all the stuff that I wanted to show was in this box. Because this one I actually still use to this day. Um, and on the side here, again, you've got some more uh, screenshots of games. But here it's actually got a list of games on it. So in the Adventure series... Uh, it says it's got the legend is you know you know some of the games that are in the adventure series now these don't come with it these are just games that you could buy for the console so legend of zelda metroid kid icarus zelda 2 and uh super mario brothers and then in their sports category you got mike tyson's punch out rad racer rc pro-am uh, baseball pro wrestling and golf and I believe I have every single one of those. I don't think there's any of those that I, I'm missing. Obviously, the baseball, pro wrestling, and golf are pretty common ones to find. But um, actually, I say pretty much all of those are pretty common to find. Now, the one with Mike Tyson's Punch Out, I believe I actually have both versions because there's Mike Tyson's Punch Out and then there's just Punch Out where they took Mike Tyson out of it. So I, I don't know if it was a licensing deal or whatever, but uh, there was there was two different ones, and I. I'm trying to think of the last, the last, the last boss in that one. I think it's either, I think it's Sandman. I believe I could be wrong on that. I don't remember. So again, on this side here, uh, again we have a uh, NES Advantage at the top, and then the other one is the NES Max, which was a uh, just a a different Nintendo branded controller that you could get. Uh, kind of the unique thing about that is instead of having just like a regular D-pad, it actually had a D-pad that you could that like almost rolled. It was. It was very unique. Uh, actually, reminds me a lot of like the uh, 3DS's uh, um, uh, uh, joystick on that. So a little different. Um, on the back again, you've got the uh, we've got the family there that's all huddled around the TV again. Still, where you have to have the console, the controller, and the family all in one shot with the TV showing the the, the gameplay. 
I mean, obviously nobody huddles around like that. I don't think I don't think the family does that much, but you know, then again, it shows you everything that comes with it, the console, the uh, controllers, the light gun, and this one actually did come with a game. So let's go ahead and get this one unboxed. And again, this has got a nifty little handle for you to pull out on it. Now the plastic on this one, or styrofoam on this one, is actually in not as not as great of shape. Um, but I believe when my uh, ex was a child, she actually carved her name into it. So uh, kind of a neat little thing on there. Now this one, as you can see, the NES is in way better shape. A dead spider on the back. Nice. You got a game in there? Nope, no game. So uh, as you see, this one's in a little bit better shape. So we'll put the console over there. So one of the, you know, obviously one of the great selling points about this is the light gun or the zapper. Now the zapper came in two different color shades. It came in this orange color and then it came in a gray one. And I believe they went all to this orange color because people said that, you know, they don't want anything that looks like a gun being handed out. So this one here definitely, you know, was like, nope, this is not a gun versus the other one, which obviously I don't think anyone would ever mistake for a gun either. But, um, you know, they wanted to, you know, change the collar so that it definitely falls. And this is like with like all toy guns where they usually have an orange tip. Well, they just made the whole, the, the whole gun orange on this. And two controllers. I'm just going to get one of them out here because really they're the same controller. But you can see it's just got a uh, regular controller on it. These are a little dirty. Probably need to be cleaned. May do that before I put them back up. Uh, nice little spot for the uh, power adapter. And a spot here for the RF. And this one also came with the uh, the converter, so that if you had the uh, old TVs with the uh, uh, the screws on the back, that you could use the you know this to adapt to work with that. Now this is where it gets interesting. So a lot of this has this has a lot of the advertisements still in it. So uh, so a lot of stuff for Nintendo Power. So. I'll kind of show that here a little bit. Uh, well, we can get some close-ups here afterwards so you can see some of the documentation. Uh, but a lot of stuff for the Nintendo Power. Well, that's interesting because this doesn't even go with this. This is for Data East. So this would be a... Uh, for This is a video game manufacturer or a game developer, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it should be called. What do we got here? Now this, it, it, again, not, yeah, I don't know. This one here, that's that's awesome. It's got RoboCop, Bad Dudes, Rampage, Cobra Command, Burger Time, uh, is that a Karate Champ, and Karnov. So a whole list of Data East games on there. That's a that's awesome. I have to frame that. It's a great thing because, you know, a lot of times I get these consoles out. I wouldn't look at all the paperwork that's in here. I mean, who would? And here's another poster. What do we got on here? Ah, we got the power player. So we've got Desert Commander. Um... Okay, so Rocket Ranger, Rescue the Embassy Mission. This is a game I just bought. This one's a cover shooter, oddly, or kind of like a cover shooter kind of game. It's actually kind of neat. And then Shadowgate, which, uh, again, is a very fun game. It's a kind of a point-and-click adventure. And again, more Nintendo Power. Two, for some reason, two warnings to not use with a uh, rear a rear projection TV. So this was, I'm assuming, for the light gun. Oh no, this is the damage. This could damage your TV. So what it's saying here is, this is a warning that if you have a rear projection TV and you leave your game paused, that you can actually burn the image into your TV. So um, this manual very familiar because it's the same control deck manual that we had in the other one. 
Uh, if I want to go ahead and register my for my warranty for my in Nintendo Entertainment System, I can still register for the warranty. Is this another ad for Nintendo Power? Oh, that, this is neat. This, so this is the manual for the Zapper. That's a that's pretty good. Um, and if there's any of these manuals that you, heck you want us just to go in and say, Hey, we, let's, let's look over the zapper manual. I mean, we could definitely do a separate video where we just talk about these kind of things. Oh, this, this looks like a Capcom ad. Does it actually have a poster or is it just an ad? Oh no, it's just an ad. Unfortunately, um, this is an ad for, uh, for Capcom. So. I'm not going to name all the games off there because I can't see through this one like I can the other one. But you can see it's got a list of Capcom games and then uh, a place that you can sign up for, I guess, their club. Their Craze Club. Nice. It's got that right next to the microphone. They're probably like, gosh, it's so annoying. Now this... This is now playing with some power. I don't even know if I can get that all the way in frame. We'll do a close-up shot of all this material here, at least as much as we can. Yeah, this is what you put up in your room so that everybody knows that you're everybody knows that you're the cool kid in town. But you know what? This is kind of brings up a point, just like seeing all of this stuff like this excites me to this day, seeing all of this stuff. And I just don't feel like you get that with like newer consoles. Like, yeah, you get a manual, you'll get some stuff, but it's you don't usually get like blurbs like this. You may get a coupon for something, you know, or, you know, like, oh, you get some points off on the, you know, the online store. But this you had actual stuff you could hang up in your room, actual stuff you could just sit around and look at. Um, and. It's just it's just something that I feel is lost, and I think we kind of talked about this with like when we talked about the uh, the Warcraft Two uh, game and any of the PC games. Like it, they used to have a presence to them when you would buy them, and now anymore it's just you you buy a console, you buy a console. It's, it's there, there's no glitz and glam to it. You, you know, it's not a event, and I think that's probably why a lot of people like this type of stuff, watching people unbox stuff, because it does kind of bring back that memory of of christmas opening these things and not just seeing the console and hooking up the console but then later going back through and seeing all the manuals and reading this stuff and you know just seeing you know oh is there anything neat that the zapper can do well i can't shoot my brother with it so i guess that's uh, unfortunate but you know being able to go in and uh you know take a look and you know just imagine and this is the way that we had to determine, you know, if there, if we wanted to buy a game or not. We didn't have the internet. We couldn't look at game reviews and stuff like that. I mean, there was very little on TV. And even TV commercials, you know, a lot of times were very false in their advertisements. They would have, like, this cool person doing, you know, all sorts of stuff. And you play the game and you're just like, this is... What you showed in your commercial is absolutely not representative of what your game is. And I get it. It's 8-bit. You're not going to have that. But, but, you know, like when you looked at the screenshots, it's like, uh, you know, see something like the legend of Zelda and you say, Hey, this looks really cool. It's like, I'm climbing through, you know, walking through dungeons and fighting monsters, you know? Yeah. At the time, those graphics were great. While graphics have, uh, since, you know, far almost to the point of looking like reality, I feel like there's something that's kind of lost on, on, you know, the generations that have come out now because everything has to be realistic looking at all that. And back when all this stuff came out, it was definitely a simpler time. So, but I'm not going to keep going down a uh, memory road here. So, uh, I am going to go ahead and, uh, we'll get the close ups here and then, um, I'll see you after that. All right. So here is just a close-up of all of the, the posters that came with it. Now, I don't have all of them unfolded um, because there's a lot in here, and I don't have actually a big enough table to put all of them on here. So you can see uh, there was the, the Capcom ad, um, the manuals. I'm trying to 
try not to get my shadow on there. There you go. As you can see that there was a projection TV warning so you could actually burn the image into your screen if you left it paused on one of those kind of TVs. And you can see here is a big version of that Nintendo Power ad. And then, for whatever reason, three small versions of the Nintendo Power ad. So, And then a poster for uh, Data East. Now, back to the video. Well, if you look right here, it doesn't look like I've shown you any close-ups yet, but um, just know that magic of editing, everything will be laid out and close-ups will have been done. I uh, just have to have a place to actually you know, do the video magic at. So, uh, But anyways, um, I do uh, thank you again for watching another unboxing. Uh, we're getting close to that 10th uh, unboxing. I think, I think we're at number six. Maybe seven. I'll have to look. But once we get to number 10, I've got a very, very, very special unboxing. And if you think this was awesome, that one is going to be spectacular. So anyways, uh, go ahead and do the normal uh, YouTube stuff. You know, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, we're definitely going to be hitting that goal of 300. So we may have to set 350 as our goal going forward. Because, uh, yeah, we definitely want to grow the channel. We love hearing your guys' feedback and all that. Um, also, check us out on X at The Real Geek Cabal and on Facebook at Geek Cabal. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's all that I got. And now you're playing with power.